He praised the Lord. I want to appreciate our leaders, traditional leader, our leaders in the Muslim sector, our leaders in the Christian sector. As we join hands together, hearts together, and we follow the same route, our nation through us before we die will change for the better in Jesus' name. Thank you, our leaders. Thank you for being here. And thank you for lending a positive, powerful word to the change we need to have in our country. I'm not here to preach. I'm not going to say much. I'm just going to summarize things. How do you become a changed person, a changed leader, and a mover of change in our community? Thank you very much. You can sit down. We're looking at the story of a man. Why? Biographies are very good, very essential. When you read the biography of a man, a woman, who has made a change in his life, a change in his family, a change in his country, and it goes on record that other people can read about, other people can also follow. They produce other change makers. That's why you're here today. Some of our leaders, speakers, are spoken about Abraham Lincoln. A lot we can say about him. In fact, there are books written on leadership, the Abraham Lincoln style. And then we've heard of people like Nelson Mandela. Again, is another great leader in his own realm. And then what he went through and had the process of becoming eventually the president of South Africa and the changes that were made. Now, I'm going to pick up a story. It's a story of a change maker in the Bible. And I'm looking at the man, David. This man, David, made a great change in the nation of Israel. And we read about him just like we read about other people too that have made changes. And from the record since Psalm 18, reading from verse 35, here is what he said, Thou hast also given me the shield of thy, of thy salvation. And he said, My right hand, as thou hast holding me up. Your right hand holds me up. And, and then you said, your gentleness, that's a leader, your gentleness has made me great. The most popular story of David, how he became a leader, what he did as a leader comes out of the battle he had with the Philistines. And that propelled him. Everybody knew this is the kind of man we're looking for. And today, you will gather principles from him. And they came to battle Israel on one side and the Philistines on one side. And everything was quiet until somebody took the initiative and came out in front of the Philistines. His name is Goliath. And he told the people, give me a man, just a man. You know, there's something a man can do that a community of people and many, many people together like a mob, like they cannot do. Give me a man and then we will fight together. If he defeats me, then we're all your servants. And if I defeat him, then you will be our servants. I want you to see the change that will come 
when the Philistines or Goliath become the leader of both the Philistines and the Israelites, the Lord will change. Or when David will become the leader of the Israelites and the Philistines, a great, you know, there's going to be a great change. There are four people that are in the story. Number one is Saul. Number two is Eliab. Eliab was the senior brother of David. And number three was Goliath himself. And then number four, now we have David. Now, when you look at a person, and you look at what you are expecting from that person, Saul was the king, and he was the principal change maker let me say this way he should have been the principal change maker somebody looks at you at your position somebody looks at you at your election you are elected there and they say that person will be the change maker uh, that's a person like Saul and then number two Eliab was a possible change maker that's why the whole family sent him go along with Saul let him be the principal change maker and then you are a possible change maker now we come to Goliath and Goliath uh, was the change makers adversary any good thing you plan any good paths you pave anything that you say i'm going there i'm going to achieve that there's always an adversary that's why you get ready that you have a vision there's something or somebody that will oppose that vision you have a goal there's something there's somebody that will oppose that goal you have something you say before i leave this world this is what I must do. And there is somebody there waiting to block your way. But you will over every mountain and everything that stands in your way. The wind of destiny will blow them out of the way. And you will get to where you want to get to. Understand? Understand? This is not just for you. It is what you bring to life, bring to the table to make a change in your community. Now we have uh, 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 David, and, and David was a prototype for change makers. Look at David, young, he's going to be young at heart. You might be 70, you might be 90, but when you are young at heart, you're still dreaming. You're still visualizing, and you're still listening to your community. You still see what's the problem in my nation to be solved. What is the challenge other people have not been able to get through and propose a workable solution? It's not your age that matters, actually. When we talk of age, there is chronological age. That's, you know, you are 40, you are 43, by the calendar. That's chronological age. There's biological age. What that means is, the scientists will look at your body. And they will see the veins and the blood and the brain and everything. And they will say, although you are chronologically 70, biologically you are 50. You are younger and therefore you have the vision. You have the drive. There is number three also, the psychological age. How you think? How you feeling? How you emotion? How the stress of life, how they affect you. And scientists can measure that this person, although he is 70 chronologically, he is 50 when you think about his biological age. But as you look at the way he's able to stand in stress, able to imagine and how the winds that blow and the things that affect people generally, they make him to even take advantage of every adversity. Then you have another measure of your age. As we look at ourselves, 
Maybe you are young, but maybe you are 50 and you look like you are 70 in the way you carry yourself, in the way you move, in the way you think, in the way you plan. Search everything aright. There's nothing you can do about the chronological age, but it's a lot you can do about your biological age and about your psychological age. Now, David, David was a prototype for change makers. Let me go over that again. I'm looking at Saul. Saul, Saul should have been the leader there, but Saul was a kind of a super, a super ambassador, having aptitude, but unusually lax. Look at Saul, S A U L, superior aptitude, unusually lax. He wasn't, he wasn't ready. Although he had superior authority, he had superior power, he had superior choice, and everybody looked at him, he was up there, aptitude, but he was lax, lost. As you look at Eliab, Eliab, who went to battle, he had the physique, he had the privilege, the opportunity, but as he saw David, he was questioning David was having a local fight there. It was saying, why are you here? What are you doing here? A liar? How do you describe a liar? It's an embarrassing liability in another battle. You know, uh, when you are concerned about the local battle, there's no way you can find, fight international battle. When you are concerned about finding fault, there's family fight, and all that, and you are localized there, like Eliab. And all you can see now, Eliab, look up. David is not the problem. Goliath in front of you is the problem. But the man was so bogged down by the little, little things in the family, and that family kind of fight hindered him from being a real warrior in the battle that matters you must ask yourself sometimes what battle are you fighting your local assembly what battle are you fighting in your worship center as a muslim what battle are you fighting in the palace as a leader is that the battle that concerns all of us is that the battle that confronts all of us are we like a liar, embarrassing, liability in another battle. Here comes Goliath. Goliath, how do you describe Goliath? Here was a godless opposer leading insurrection against treasured heritage. Israel was treasured by the nation of Israel and by all nations around. It was a treasured heritage, even for God. But here comes Goliath, godless, opposer, leading insurrection against the treasured heritage. Now comes David. And David, as he came, you can even tell from his walk, from his movement, you can tell from the kind of joints he had that could swing very well. You can tell the sight he had. Yes, he saw Saul. He saw beyond Saul. He saw Goliath. He saw beyond Goliath. He saw beyond the challenge of today. And he saw God on the throne. And he said, with God on the throne, with my faith in him. This Goliath and the Philistines will be defeated. And I come to tell you in your life, all that opposition in your life, all that putting down in your life, you have become an overcomer. Yeah. Every hurdle, every mountain, every challenge before you will walk through those challenges. We will make the change God has made, told us and commissioned us to make, you will be a change maker in Jesus' name. Yeah. 
Now, David, talk to me about yourself. It says, this Goliath, it didn't say, I may. It didn't say, perhaps. It didn't say, maybe. It said, Saul, don't worry about this Goliath. I will. I will bring him down. And every problem, every opposition before you, against the change that you ought to make, you will bring everything down. Yeah. David, daring ambassador, virtuous in dominion. Daring. As you look at it, David, it was a daring man. Young man, David, how do you want to confront a man like this? He's been a warrior from his youth. Don't worry, he's daring. He's an ambassador. An ambassador not just for his family. There are people that pray, God bless me and John, my son, and Janet, my wife and uh, our family after that full stop whatever happens to other people good love for them you change makers are not like that change makers are ambassadors for a community ambassadors for a nation ambassadors for the people that live today and the people that are going to live after them david daring ambassador virtuous Virtuous. That's a man with courage. That's a man with stamina. That's a man that has a backbone. Uh, you know, if you don't have a backbone to stand, if you cannot stand for something, uh, there's no way you'll be able to bring a change. But you have the vision. You have the goal. You have the calling. You have the commission. And you become a daring ambassador. You are virtuous. In dominion, you'll have dominion. You'll have victory. You'll be a valiant man. And as a valiant man, you choose something. There are many, many things to change in society. You choose this part. You choose another person chooses this. Another person chooses that. And by the way we distribute all the areas of change we need, and your path comes to you, and my path comes to me, then we will rise up as daring ambassadors, virtuous in dominion in Jesus' name. Now, when I'm looking at the story, many of us already know the story. And the story, I go from the very beginning, and I just point out some things to you to draw out principles as to how we become the kind of change makers we ought to be. The number one is the confrontation against the change mastery. Change mastery. A master who picks up a subject, and the subject is change making. In my locality, in the circle inside which I stand, in my area. And then, as I grow, I expand that circle. And then I grow, I expand that circle. So, when you have dominion, and when you become a change master in a little circle, increase the radius a little bit, and increase the circumference of that circle and increase and increase and before we finish and before you finish you've made changes in areas areas in jesus name let me illustrate in mobility for example we're traveling by animals those beasts of bodies they are carriers the ass, maybe the horse, and then we go, and then somebody said, we should go faster than this, and the circle was exp expanded. Now we have a bicycle. Now we have to use a lot of strength. But although we're going faster than if we were walking, but we're sweating with that, and somebody said we can have an engine. 
and put into the bicycle and the engine will make the wheels to roll faster and we don't have to sweat and so we have a motorcycle and now this motorcycle will see the limitations too and then we expand the circle we have a car we have a lorry we have other means of uh, of moving that you know everything is going on now and then we still were stuck because of the mountains that the cars will not be able to go over because of the seas that the car will not be able to go over and now we have aeroplane from aeroplane we have concord and now on and on and some people have even expanded that circle that they have gone to the moon that's the people who see here is an area of uh, improvement we ought to have and we need to make change and so we have number one there the confrontation against change mastery in a confrontation then we have number two now number two is the cowardice of change change charged men the men were charged and in fact that's the reason they appointed Saul to be their king give us a man like other nations that will be able to go before us to battle and eventually uh, Saul was charged with that responsibility Saul how are you doing I don't know when I, I, I you know I had a great ambition and I thought I will lead the nation but you know what I saw Goliath and when I saw him, all my courage let me. When I saw him, all my decisions, all my vision, ev everything evaporated. Because this man just took all my heart away. There are people like that. You have a vision. God wants to make a change through you. And then you hear somebody there, you hear another person there. I want to tell you in the world we live, not all lions are lions. They are robots. And they make them like lions. When you see them, and they can give them the voice of a lion, they roar. But they are not real lions, they are cloned lions. I pray you'll not be afraid of shadows. Yeah. I said you'll not be afraid of shadows. Yeah. There are some people, shadows have driven them back from the path of duty. Shadows. Things that are not real, they're just cloned lions. And then when they hear the roar, the roar deafens them. And the roar blindfolds them. And they cannot see. I will see. I will see. I like the language of David. David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear. Though I walk through, keep on walking, you'll get to where you are going. And I walk through the valley. A valley is not a, it's not a permanent thing. You will not live your life in the valley of a shadow. And then David realized it's only a shadow. The shadow of a sword cannot cut me. The shadow of a lion cannot bite me. The shadow of a dog cannot hurt me. It's just a shadow. It will be unfortunate if an adult will see the picture of a lion. And then be so afraid, the lion is going to kill me, chop me up. No son, no daughter, that's not a lion. That is a shadow, a picture of a lion. It doesn't have life. I said it doesn't have life. A lion has life, has power, has destructive power. And the shadow of a lion has no life, has no power. So understand, the things that make people cowards 
Many of those six are shadows. And so we have number two then, the cowardice of charged men. Number three, you see as David came on, actually David came on a deep French errand. The father said, take this food and go give to your brothers, senior brothers, people that should make a change, go give them this and see how things are and come back and give me reports. He wasn't prepared to fight. Maybe you came here. Conference for men. <laughs> what are we doing there? Okay, maybe they'll talk about this, about this, about that. And you think uh, that will benefit me. And I, I pray that everything we've heard will benefit you in Jesus' name. You know, we heard about health. And about health... Uh, we need to understand everything is not coming from uh, demons. If, uh, you know, if you sleep late, you normally sleep at 10 or 10.30. But this particular night, you slept at 2.30 a.m. And as you slept, uh, you try to sleep. But because your rhythm of sleeping is affected. You're not able to sleep at the right time. And then when you eventually close your eyes, you begin to see some apparitions. They have come. They have come. No, they have not come. It's because your brain, the cells and the neutrons and the connections in the brain, they have been disturbed because of your sleep. That's why those things are there. And when you, you know, sleep more and wake up in the morning and take your bath, all those imaginary demons, they're all gone. I said they're all gone. And so sometimes if you take, you know, heavy food at maybe 10 o'clock and the thing is not digesting yet, and then you go to sleep, you'll find there are, you know, sleep disturbers, demons, in quotes. But they are not demons. They're just the time you ate and the time you go to sleep. We need to wipe off all these things. Change makers do not uh, bog themselves down with all these imaginary demons. All those imaginary demons, they are canceled away from your life in Jesus' name. And, and so David came, and as David came, Eliab was not expecting David to show up. And so he said, why are you here? What are you doing here? How is it you are prognosing into what is our right? My friend Eliab, that's your right, but you are not making use of your right. You're standing behind the screen, uh, the screen and uh, you are not doing what you ought to do. And here I come, and David said, Is there not a cause? Think about that. A person that knows I am on, on earth, planet earth, is there not a cause? I am at school. I'm studying now. But the study and the certificate, they are not the end of my destiny. Is there not a cause? I am living in this area, and I see the situation. I see the hunger. I see the aspirations of the people. I see their sorrow. I see their problem. Why am I here? Is, that, is there not a cause? And I see Goliath that comes to threaten the nation of God. I see the hunger. I see the bad situation against our nation. And I am here to, he to hear the sound and to hear the sorrows of the people and to see their tears. Is there not a cause? Always think in your life. When somebody challenges you, when somebody tries to, you know, block your way, why are you here? You might, you might even not be a native of this state, but God has brought you here, and nothing happens by accident. Give me a good amen. Yeah. There's no accident in your life. I am not an accident. I said, I am not an accident. 
And so there must be a cause. And so David said, is there not a cause? The cause for the change maker. The cause for the change maker. You don't live, you don't want to live Tuesday the same way you lived on Monday. You don't want to live on Wednesday the same way you lived on the other day. You want every day, every day, every day to contribute to what you have in life to do and you want to be you want to see improvement look at you know uh, the common computer we now use because there is a cause you study science you study engineering you study this and that there's a time that you know they add a kind of computer gigantic in one room all the operations of that company, everything, you have to refer to that computer. And then eventually somebody thought, this is too big. This is too costly for anyone to carry along. And eventually they have a reduced version, even with more power. And then later it went on and on. Now you carry the phone, the smartphone or the cell phone in your hand, and see lots of computer. In fact, the computer you have inside that little cell phone is more, than, is more powerful than all than the computer they had at first. It's because somebody had a cost to live for, and they keep on doing that and doing that, and were beneficiaries of all those things that people said, I'm here for a cause. I'm here for a reason. I'm here for a purpose. And I pray you will have a cause to live for. A work to do that no other person can do. A change to make that no other person can make. Let me come to number four. Number four, we're talking about the confession of a challenged messenger, the confession that they brought uh, David eventually uh, to Saul because he parted ways with Eliab. Uh, there are, you know, if you have something to live for, a cause to do, a work to do, uh, an assignment to carry out, there are times you have to part ways with the people who are always puncturing holes in your balloon, who are always saying, uh, why that? Why are you here? What are you doing? What do you think you can achieve that I cannot achieve? How do you think, being a younger person, younger generation, you can do what the older people have not done? There are times it's wise and it's profitable for you to separate from Eliab, let him go his way, the embarrassing liability in another battle, and then own the cause you have and the project you have and the change you have to make. And so he left Eliab and he brought him to Saul. And Saul said, my son, what are you thinking of? Oh, he said, I'm not just thinking, I am planning. You must go beyond thinking to planning. You will plan your life. Whatever you don't plan will fail. But if you plan and you say this is what I, and you must be specific in that plan. It's not just, uh, you know, something to enable us. That you cannot pin it down and say, this is what I will achieve. When you pin it down like that, and you plan it very well, and you say, this is where I am going. And there are no demons of darkness around to stop you. Nobody will stop you. And so he became, he came now, and then he had confession as a challenge messenger. He said, so... The king, with all due respect, don't let anybody panic because of this Goliath. Watch. I said, don't let anybody worry about this Goliath. What do you mean? He said, because I am here and I'm going to get him down. You didn't say amen to that one. Yeah. And the king said, my boy, thank you for your intention. But you cannot have action to back up that intention in that situation. 
What do you mean, sir? That man, look at him, his height. Look at your height. He's been a warrior from his youth. And sh you see his armor bearer. Do you have armor bearer? <laughs> no, sir. But I have God as my armor. He goes before me. He comes behind me. He stays around me. He lives with his word powerful and positive in my heart. And dear king, let me tell you, I was in the bush, in the forest. I was watching over the sheep of my father. A lion came. And I would not even allow that lion to take a lamb out of the fold. When you can put your life in your hand. Even when people are not there to congratulate you. They are not there to give you an award. You just put your life in your hand. And he said, I took him up. I tore him with my bare hand, without any instrument. He said, from the victory of the past, I see the victory of the future. Amen. From what you have conquered in the past, what you feared in the past that you conquered, I see you. Moving on. With that understanding, I did that by the help of God in the past. Another challenge has come. I will do this one. I see you doing it. I said, I see you doing it. An achiever. Where are the achievers? Where are the achievers? You'll achieve. He said, King, I've not finished my testimony, my confession, that a bear came. I wanted to do that. I didn't say, uh, I don't want to endanger my life. I'm still young. And this one that comes, if he's not going to take that away, take that away. Let me hide. You know the people that are too careful and they're too watchful and they're preserving their energy, they're preserving their life, they're preserving their dignity, they're preserving their self-esteem. They never make changes. They're too self-conscious. And because of their self-consciousness, they don't go forth and appear to endanger their lives for something new that has to be done. He said, I didn't worry about my life. All I was worried about is to protect the sheep. And then he said, I went out and I took up the bear and I tore him to pieces. Then he said, the God that helped me to do that it will help me in this new assignment. You have a new assignment. You're going to be a change maker. You're going to look around yourself in your community. And you're saying, this will not continue. This is bad. This is hurting people. This is destroying people. And this is making them subservient. And they become slaves in their own native land. No, it will not happen when you have that. That challenge before you, it will be carried out. I said it will be carried out. And you know, people that have goals, they live long. They live longer than the usual people. You see, so they will, uh, the scientists have made investigation, and they have seen husband and wife. The wife dies, and the man has no goal, nothing to push him, nothing to spur him up, because the wife is gone. And research has shown that within six months to one year, those uh, widowers, they just, they are gone. Because, what am I living for? My partner is gone. This has happened, and that has happened. But, if you know, you cannot bring her back. Here you are. You see, I have a life to live. And there's a reason why God has preserved your life. Greater things you will do. Amen. Higher heights you will get to. And, you know, when you think of that, and you have a goal that spurs you on, and you have a dream, something to still achieve. You know, sometimes I, I talk to some Christians, 
And they say, they want to go to heaven, they want to get to heaven. I said, good, very good. I want to get to heaven too now. When you get to heaven, you're going to spend eternity in heaven. Am I right? Why are you in a hurry? Because 10 plus infinity is infinity. 100 plus infinity is infinity. And so, if you have another 30 years, spend it here. Don't be in a hurry to get to heaven. We'll get there. I will get there. Before I get there, I want to leave something behind. There's no hurry. There's no hurry. We're going to spend eternity there. If you get there before me, I'll come after you. If I get there before you, you'll come after me. If you spend 30 years in heaven before I come, when I eventually come, we'll both have eternity there. And the 30 years you spend earlier will not mean much. Eternity, infinity, all the same. Am I talking to somebody there? Don't go yet. Don't leave the earth yet. There is a seed you still need to plant that will become a tree after you have laid. Plant that seed before you go. Don't be in a hurry. So we have the confidence of the champion maker. That, that the next the confidence. The man said, I will. And he spoke that to the point. He changed Saul's mind. Saul had said, you cannot. But he said, I can. Saul said, the man is bigger, higher, greater than you are. He said, yes, but I'm stronger than he. Because I trust him that, Lord, I enter into that tower. And when you trust in the Lord, and the Lord looks at you as in the tower, the tower is higher, taller, stronger, well built, more stable than that shifting sand than Goliath in your life. Amen. Thank you for that. Amen. Amen. And so, this David had confidence. Confidence. You know, confidence is everything. You might have certificate, doctorate certificate. If you don't have confidence, you'll not go far. You might have experience. If you don't have confidence, you cannot go far. You might have all the materials, all the stuff, everything you can think about. This is what we need. If you don't have confidence in yourself, confidence in your God, confidence in the revelation the Lord had given you. You will not go far. So, with all your heart, add confidence. I have confidence. You can deliver, I have confidence. A salesman, you can have confidence. Where I failed in the past, I will succeed now. Where you failed in the past, you will succeed now. Confidence. And then we we'll have the courage of the chosen man. The courage of the chosen man. Saul, the king, had now seen, had of a volunteer. And the volunteer was to go. And then he put his coat on him. His armor on him and David tried it don't go and try the armor when you get in front of Goliath that's very dangerous try it first this one does not fit me it may fit Saul may fit other people no the tools you have the language you have the thinking you have, the memory you have, and know the instruments you have personally that will get you there and get the job done. 
and use what you are confident of that will give you the best results. Borrowed brain may not do it. Borrowed attitude may not do it. Borrowed smile has the smile, so I smile. That may not do it, but something that comes from the inside of you. This is what I tried before. I have a sling. And if I put a stone inside and I sling it like that, I can get a lion, I can get a bear, I can get an eagle, and this one is no greater than that. And so he prepared a sling and prepared a stone. And now he went, but you know, Goliath is not just a warrior. Those warriors are trained. They can size you up. If you are coming and you are looking down and you are panicking, they can tell, they can defeat you in a second. If you are coming and you are not looking at them, you cannot look at the target. You are afraid to see their stature. They know that you are not up to the battle. But David was coming. Courageous man. Everybody shout, courageous man. And he looked at Goliath, eyeball to eyeball. The person who can look at challengers, opposers. The people who can look at the magnificent build of Goliath. And they come. And the look of Goliath does not make them panic. Does not make them fearful. Those people, they will overcome. Whatever you have been afraid of before, back up. There's nothing to be afraid of. And you will overcome them in Jesus' name. And so, he came with the courage. The courage of a man that has the heart and the mind that he will overcome. The courage of the chosen man. And the Lord give you courage. The Lord give you the backbone. And the Lord give you the stamina. And in his strength, in his power, you will overcome. I will overcome. You'll overcome in Jesus' name. And as he continued, he didn't only have the courage, the confidence, the stamina, the backbone. He now went ahead. And as he went ahead, he came, and the Bible says, when he was there, Goliath threatened him. He cursed him by his God. Cursed him by his gods. Small g. There are people that have too much superstition in them. That they believe in their superstition more than they believe their scriptures. But you know, David was not like that. You must wash off all those superstitions. Well, this is what Goliath has done. This position is, his curse is so powerful that the curse will sweep you off your ground. And David said, the curse, causeless, shall not come. In my life, the curse, causeless, shall not come. In your life, the curse, causeless, shall not come. It will not come in Jesus' name. And so, the costless curse of the opponent that came, he said, no, that's gone. It will not happen. And now we go to the next. As he confronted Goliath, now he saw that there is the power to overcome. There is the strength to overcome and he adds that strength. It's as you go on in life 
And you say, here am I. And here is what I am going to do. Eventually, it is done. You will do it in Jesus' name. And eventually, he came. And when he came, he had the sling. And he put the stone one out of five. One out of five is what we call 20%. There's a lot about the 20 that we can talk about. And when he took that, he threw it on him. And the only open space, God directed that. And as he directed that, sank into Goliath. And the booster and the godless, and that opposer, and that threatening personality was brought down, and he overcame. I said, he overcame. He had said, I will, and he did. In your life, look at what you will to do. And that thing you will to do, you will in Jesus' name. Amen. And then we have the conqueror. Like Christ the Messiah. The conquerors. Like Christ the Messiah. Eventually as Goliath came down. Like all the difficulties before you will come down. Amen. All the challenges before you will come down. Amen. All those things that... You are afraid of that you say, I cannot, I may not, I may not be able to do it. You will in Jesus' name. Amen. And when Goliath was brought down, all the Israelites, they became encouraged. They became like, ah, one of us has done it. We can do it too. One of us has done it. You will do it too. And so they ran. And the Philistines also, when they saw their champion, that their champion was gone. Their champion was dead. They also retreated. And then they went away. They had lost the battle. They had lost everything. And by the grace of God, as we come here, and now you know that God has raised you up to be a change maker. A change maker you will be. A change maker I will be. And now in conclusion, when those other Israelites, when they saw that their shepherd, their king, the person who was leading them had overcome, they now rose up. They had the concrete spirit within them too. When you see Christ, our master, our model, our Messiah, that he has conquered, you have that same concrete spirit. And you know you will conquer. I will conquer. And so I can. That's what David told Saul. I can. Say, I can. And then later as they continued, he said, I will. Where are you? I will. And now if I can and I will, then I must. I must. If I, if I can do something and I don't do it, I'm not dependable. If I promise, I will do something. And then I renege on my decision. I don't do it, I'm not dependable. But when I say I can, I will, then I must. Somebody say, I must. You look at life, and you look at the purpose why you're living, and what God has called you to do and achieve before you come over there. 
there must be something in your life that you put must on. M U S T. What's that? Minimize unprofitable speech thoroughly. M U S T. You know, in our lives, there are things we need to minimize. You're using your computer, you're using your, your cell phone, you're using your laptop, and there are pictures there you minimize. Get them off there so that you can think on what really matters. I must. What's most? Maximize undeniable success tirelessly. The thing you said, I did that before I succeeded. I need to maximize that. That's the area of my strength. That's the area of my talent. That's the area of my ability. That's the area I'm raised up for to do. Maximize undeniable success tirelessly. Most. I must mortify unclean sensuality truthfully. You're not mortifying sensuality for me, for her, for him, for the church, for the most, for anybody. You're doing it for yourself truthfully. Must. I must master uncontrollable self totally. Uh, you know, in our lives, if you don't control the man here, you can not control the material there. If you don't control the one standing there, sitting there, you cannot control any other thing. And so when you say, I can, I will, I must, you will master uncontrollable self totally. Must, I must your model, unique, standard, transparently. Here is the standard, and I model that. I model that, that standard, because people are looking at me, and people are watching me, and people want to take from my example. There is a must in my life, and that must is that I model unique standards, transparently, because it's a unique standard. Others will say, it cannot be done. It cannot be done. Nobody has done that before, but when you become a model of that unique standard, and you do that transparently for everyone to see, then they'll be able to follow, I must, must. That means maintain upward steps, tenaciously. You see, when you are going up, maintain that. When you are improving, maintain that. When it appears this is succeeding, that is succeeding, maintain that. Must, I must, you maintain upward steps tenaciously. And then you must, you must. Somebody say, I must. Motivate on productive subordinates transformationally. What that means is there are subordinates, there are people around you, they are working with you, they are working by you, and they are supporting you, but uh, they are not motivated. And they are unproductive. And the things they do, they do haphazardly. Part of the most is that all those people around you that are cooperating with you to make the change, you motivate them. Those unpro unprofitable, unproductive, subordinates, and you do that transformationally. And as we think through and plan through all this that we have heard, everything we heard from the beginning, the first speaker, the second speakers, and also uh, the goodwill speakers, and what you have heard now will bring uh, everything together. You will climb mountains you have never climbed. Yeah. You'll go places you have never gone. You will do things you have never, never done. And 
a change may come there, a change may come there in every department of life, a change maker in every local government, a change maker on every field, a change maker in every corner of the society. Our society will change. Our country will change. Will turn what we have heard, will turn it into profitable venture in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and tell the Lord, we will be, you will be, I will be a change maker. If a change maker already, let the circle of influence expand. Let the circle of influence grow and say, Lord, I can, I will, I must. And the Lord put grace, strength, and power in that decision, I must. Heavenly Father, we well, thank you. We are here before you. You are the almighty change maker. Transform our lives and make us change makers. Appropriate, equipped, energized, empowered for our community. Thank you, Lord. We will see it. It is done in every life. Amen.